Hello everybody, today we're going to be doing a top 10 list of great flags that I love for their design, for their uniqueness, for how really the thought and effort that was put into them, for the fact that I find them absolutely fascinating, and I'm going to be putting them all here in a list of 10 flags on this list, and I hope you guys like these flags, but also... If you have flags that you really like and you would like to sort of do a list of your own, please comment in the comment section down below listing off flags that you guys enjoy and like and, and, and feel like are really greatly designed. Now before I go into the top 10 list of these flags, what I wanted to talk about is the United States flag, the Texas flag, the Colorado flag, and the Tennessee flag. Now because I'm an American citizen and I wanted to sort of go over the country which I was born and the states that I visited and I've stayed in for a long period of time. I wanted to go over and just uh, give you guys a basic review of these flags before I do that. So I stayed in Tennessee most of my life and the Tennessee flag I think is an okay flag amongst the flags of the 50 states. I think it's a fine flag. The red background with the three white stars and the blue circle with the kind of blue border on the on the right side. Um, it's there's nothing that stands out to me about the flag. I, I growing up, I've never thought it was an absolutely stunning flag. I think the red background is too much to be honest with you, and it's not really that appealing to me. Um, now I have moved down to Texas. I lived in Austin, Texas for a year and a half, and I think the Texas flag is very basic in my opinion. It reminds me of the flag of Chile. If you look at the flag of Chile, there's a lot of similarities between the two flags. But you have the blue border on the left side, you have the red border on the on the bottom and the white on top, and you have the white star within the blue border. And nothing much else to say about this design as it's very basic. There's no uniqueness to it. It's very forgettable in my opinion. And I think for some reason I feel like the Chile flag is a little bit more interesting of a flag. Now going to the Colorado flag for where I'm residing in right now in Denver, Colorado. Of the three states flag, I think I think the Colorado flag is sort of my favorite so far. The design is basic, but of the three, I think it's a little bit more unique. The Red Sea for Colorado that envelops the kind of yellow circle in the middle, I like. I think it's a sort of a unique uh, unique t uh, symbol where it's in where it's uh, sort of centered a little bit on the left side and with the white bar and the two blue bars on the top and the bottom they're fine enough again it's not a completely unique flag I think there is some level of basic design to it but nothing stands out about it and uh, but I like it better than the Tennessee and Texas flag now considering the United States flag itself I can't say anything remarkable about the stars and bars, the red bars with the white bars and the kind of in the top corner where you have the blue uh, blue uh, blue square with the all 50 states uh, um, all 50 state stars. That's fine to me. I think the design is n nothing unique. I actually kind of like the Greek flag a little bit better in this in the sort of similar design that it has when you compare it to the United States flag with its bars and so on and so forth. The kind of same structure and design that it has, I think it's a little bit more unique. But the United States flag, there's nothing really th that great about it. And I don't think it's th that much of a better flag than, let's say, the British flag, which is the Union Jack. I think the Union Jack is wonderful. It's a beautiful flag in my opinion and uh, the United States flag even in comparison to the Canada flag which I included on this list the Canada flag to me which I'll explain further is a lot more of a unique flag now let's get out of the way and let's start talking about the top 10 starting off with number 10 Papua New Guinea now the Papua New Guinea flag I like because of the fact that it just it just stands out with the fact that it has a bird of paradise silhouette on it as two, uh, it has two colored triangles. One is red, one is black, and then it has about five stars, which is, I believe, based off of the Southern Cross constellation, following flags of Australia and New Zealand. It's a very unique flag. I like. I just like the Bird of Paradise. I think it's a very unique addition to the flag, and it's very fitting for the fact that. Papua New Guinea is a very much a tropical country. There's a vast amount of wildlife within the sort of rainforest that it has in, in that country. And it's an absolutely stunning country. And I'm glad that they included it in that flag. 
So some facts about it is that the capital of the country of Papua New Guinea is Port Mosby. And New Guinea has a population of around 8 million people, with most of the population living in customary communities, which is land that is owned by the indigenous communities and administered in accordance with their customs. Villages that are basically run by those clans, by those tribes, and administered in a collective way. Papua New Guinea is one of the most linguistically diverse countries in the world. There are 851 known languages in the country, of which 11 have no known speakers. And that is because of this kind of tropical rainforest nation that it is. There's so many spread out villages and over thousands of years, these sort of isolated groups developed into their own languages. And what you have is now this amazing nation that's so linguistically diverse. And it's absolutely fascinating from an anthropological point of view. Number nine, Belize. I like Belize's flag because of the unique emblem in this center. I think the two individuals, one with an axe, the other one with an oar, is uh, pretty pretty unique for a flag to have. And it's also a callback to the colonial pr period that it was under Great Britain. It also has some symbols in the middle with some tools and also a ship. And I forgot what the the term underneath it, what it, what is sum, sub umbre floreo in the shadow flourish, which is, I hope I pronounced that correctly, everybody, please let me know in the comment section down below if I completely butchered that term, but I like it because of the symbol in the middle, the emblem is, is quite stunning. The blue background and the two red bars that are on the top and the bottom are fine enough, but I think that's what kind of catches my eye every time I look at this flag. And I like it, you know, it's a unique country as well. Belize has a population of a little over 400,000 people, and its capital is Belmopan, which is considered the smallest capital in the Americas, only having a population of roughly over 17,000 people. The largest city in Belize is Belize City, which has over 50,000 people, and it's kind of a head-scratcher why Belize City is not considered the capital or wasn't made the capital of Belize, like how Mexico City is the capital of Mexico. One interesting fact about Belize is there is a sizable population of Mennonites in Belize, with about 4,961 members as of 2014. But the total number, including children and young unbaptized adults, was around 12,000. Of these, some 10,000 of them were ethnic Mennonites. Most of them were Russian Mennonites, who speak a form of Plattdeutsch, a low German dialect. It's such a kind of far removed dialect from German that a lot of German speakers can't even recognize what they're saying. It's such a basic redneck, hickish dialect to many of them when they encounter Mennonites or even some Amish people who speak this language. Number eight, Sri Lanka. What can I say about Sri Lanka's fact? It's a lion holding a sword. That is awesome. That's cool. I think the yellow uh, back, uh, the yellow background with the kind of red in this, in the kind of right side with the orange and the green bars on the left side are a unique addition to the flag. But what makes this flag great is the lion holding the sword. I like that. It's what can I say more than that? It's a cool flag to look at. Having a lion wielding a sword in the middle is pretty freaking cool. Uh, Sri Lanka has a population of little over 22 million people and its, co its capital is Colombo. Now, as of the making of this video, Sri Lanka is going through some political turmoil and is on the brink of collapse. There's a lot of corruption that has occurred in that country and a lot of uh, wealthy people have basically taken the resources away from people, siphoned out of them, stolen a lot of the money from the people, and due to that fact, it's on the brink of economic collapse. There's been fuel shortages, food shortages, and because of this, there's been huge protests. One that was very famous was there was a large protest of people that stormed the British presidential palace and took it over. And the president of the country has fled. He's taken off. He doesn't want to stay around and wait for what was going to happen to him. So many political leaders are fleeing from these protesters who basically are trying to overthrow their government and lead into a new revolution. Hopefully, good things are to come with Sri Lanka. I hope these people will be able to be, persist through and overcome and survive what the turmoil and all the chaos that is happening right now in Sri Lanka. So all I can say is stay strong, Sri Lanka. Number seven, Canada. Canada's flag is simple. 
it's basic and it's that's why i kind of like it and that's why i kind of find it unique the maple leaf flag the red maple leaf flag with the two red bars on the side i don't know every time i look at this flag i like it more and more the simplicity of the maple leaf flag th there's nothing to me that says anything aggressive or anything bad about this flag <laughs> It's a very nice flag for very nice Canadians. A red maple leaf. That's all I can kind of say. Uh, Canada has a population of about a little over 38 million people, and its capital is Ottawa. About four-fifths of the population live within 150 kilometers, or 93 miles, of the border with the contiguous United States. If you look at a demographic map of the country of the nation of Canada, you will see that much of the population sticks to the border, from Vancouver, Calgary, to Ottawa, Windsor, and all those areas, you see much of the population is staying around uh, the border, because going north in Canada, you hit inhospitable uh, taiga and tundra a wasteland which is difficult to live in now with climate change undergoing and and the temperature of the world warming up much of this place is not going to become too inhospitable for much much longer but right now much of the population of almost 40 million people is stuck or almost with the around the border of the united states the most densely populated part of the country accounting for nearly 50 percent is the quebec city windsor corridor in southern quebec and southern ontario along the great lakes and st lawrence river now the only place that i've been to in canada and i would love to one day revisit canada is niagara falls like a typical american tourist back in 2007 we went to visit niagara falls whoop de doo it wasn't a big deal i mean it was a cool waterfall to look at but also it was really cool to check out the uh ripley's believe it or not museum which i thought was pretty interesting and that was really one of the only times i kind of remember visiting canada and i liked it i want to go back there one day number six angola angola's flag simple i like the fact they have a machete on it <laughs> they have a machete the black bar on the bottom the red bar on the top is a good addition the kind of yellow star and the sort of industry will that's also in the middle is a re is a reminder of the kind of communist origins of the country the the symbol of communism the fact that they had a civil war for a long period of time within that nation and i believe the communists sort of uh won out in the end and now what they have is this kind of beautiful flag with the awesome machete on it what can i say it's pretty cool to look at uh the population of angola is around 33 million people and its capital is luanda which is also its largest city of course according to the mercer's annual cost of living index luanda is the world's most expensive city the main reasons why luanda is ranked as the most expensive city are because the high cost of rent the fact that it's imported a lot of go uh, goods and the security in the oil rich nation goods are very expensive generally speaking renting a two-bedroom apartment you will have to pay on average an astonishing six thousand eight hundred dollars according to the financial times that is ridiculously high considering that much of the population lives in extreme poverty so you have this huge inequality of the mega rich living in the, the capital city of Rwanda number five Uganda it has a crane in the middle it has a crane in the middle and I like that uh, the crane I guess is the national bird of Uganda and it appeared on the national coat of arms already at the time when Uganda was a British colony so yeah that's what's cool the kind of the the sequence of uh, black yellow red black yellow red bars are fine enough I think but what catches the eye is that crane and I think that's why I wanted to include it on this list <laughs> is because of that crane. Um, Uganda has a population of over 42 million people, of which 8.5 million people live in the capital and largest city of Kampala. Now, there was a fun fact in that there was a huge Indian population back in the 70s, but due to Idi Amin, uh, dictatorship he actually expelled most of these ugandan asians who were mostly of indian origin some were others from other countries and this is back in 1972 and it reduced the population to as low as 7,000. Idimin used them as a scapegoat blaming them on their economic problems and much of the population at that time were convinced that the problems were due to the indians so this mass expulsion happened and over the decades since Idi Amin's death uh, and 
and really being out of power basically there have been many indians having returned to uh to the country and most of the people most of these indians actually live and reside within the capital city of kampala which is a pretty sad thing that happened that they're slowly returning back to their homes and stuff but it is a sad aspect of history and i wanted to mention it number four saudi arabia Saudi Arabia's flag has a sword on it, <laughs> like the Angolan flag with the machete. I like this flag because of the green coloring that it has, the green background is really nice to look at. Uh, the sort of inscription that's in the middle that says there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is his prophet. I mean, I'm not a Muslim and I, it doesn't really apply to me whatsoever, but really what catches me off guard is the green color I really like and the fact that it has a really cool sword. And yeah, I, I can't really say much of it, anything else about that. Saudi Arabia has a population of a little over 34 million people, and its capital, largest city, is Riyadh. In 2020, migrants, surprising enough, comprised roughly 38.4% of the population of Saudi Arabia, many from South Africa, I mean, many from Africa and South Asia. Almost all of these migrants were considered temporary workers or visitors. Though many uh, stay for years and sometimes even generations as gaining permanent residency is difficult in the country. So yeah, there's many people who are staying there and they are discriminated and many of them are abused. Though over time there have been human rights organizations that have been helping out these migrants living in Saudi Arabia. Number three, Mozambique. Mozambique has an AK-47 on its flag, and it's unique in that I think it's the only flag in the world with a weapon like that, <laughs> with a gun on it, which is pretty cool. I like the fact that the the AK-47 is next to an ore on top of a book within a kind of yellow star and a red triangle. There's the kind of green bar, black bar, and yellow bar, but I get what stands out about this flag and really is why i'm attracted to these flags is when you have a unique object on the flag considering it's a weapon or a tool so in this case having an ak-47 is pretty cool which is a reference to the fact that this country was born out of violence there was the mozambique kind of war of independence fighting against portugal and then immediately afterwards i think it was in 1975 they gained their independence but shortly afterwards in 1977 the war the country descended into a civil war and that lasted more than a decade so this country has been born out of violence and and because of this it's still a very poor nation the population of mozambique is a little over 30 million people with the capital and largest city being maputo although uh, mozambique is still really poor nation because of the wars that they had in the past and because of the ongoing corruption and other geographical issue that it has Half of its population still live on less than one dollar a day. It also has one. Of, it's also uh, one of the fastest uh, growing economies, though. The industry, mainly food and beverages, chemical manufacturing, and aluminum and petroleum production, are growing within the nation. There's been a lot more investments over time, so it is starting to kind of grow out of this this state of extreme poverty. Even though it will take time for the population to sort of get from kind of a third world status and become sort of a better nation. Number two, Eswatini. Now with Eswatini, like I stated before, I like it when flags include an interesting object on their front. And they have some interesting objects here. They have two spears and they have a shield, what looks like a Zulu shield or a Swazi shield, uh, considering that it, it's pertaining to their specific ethnic group, that's what kind of catches my eye, is that it has a kind of unique, it has some weapons on it. And that's my whole list, again, is that much, much of these flags are cool because they have weapons on it. But I have to say, the Eswatini flag is unique in that sense. You have it with the kind of reddish background, or I think it's a little bit of a dark red background, the two yellow bars, and then the two blue bars that are on the top and bottom. Uh, other than that, I, I can't say anything else about it, it, but the fact that I like the, and I, my eye focuses on the shield, and that's what I like about that. 
Eswatini has a population of a little bit over a million people, and its capital is Umbambane. It's a landlocked country, which is also an absolute monarchy with constitutional provision and Swazi laws and customs. The head of state is a king, and I'm not going to say the term here. I'm going to put it on on screen. It's considered a lion, and currently the king here is Maswati the third. I hope that is the correct pronunciation of his name. Um, who ascended to the throne in 1986 after the death of his father, King Sobahaza II, in 1982, in a period of regency. According to the country's constitution, the king is a symbol of unity and the eternity of the Swazi nation. So it's unique in the sense of like, like Saudi Arabia, it's an absolute monarchy with sort of a head of uh, with a head of state who has absolute control over the country. Considering it's a very small country, I I see that maybe it'll last for maybe a couple decades until it becomes fully a democracy. And number one, Bhutan. Bhutan has a dragon on it, holding Dragon Balls. That's what I could say about this country. It's pretty cool to see a dragon on its flag. Now, considering I wanted to include Wales on this list for the fact that they also have a dragon on their flag, they're incorporated into the United Kingdom, so it wouldn't be technically correct for me to say to put them that nation on this on this list, but Bhutan has a really cool looking a dragon. Um, it's called, I mean, the, the flag reflects the country's name in its local language, which is means the country of the thunder dragon. It's a thunder dragon. I mean, how can how cool can it be? So, of course, you see the flag divided diagonally. There's a yellow triangle on the top, and there's an orange triangle at the bottom. But again, in the simp- it doesn't matter what, about the background. What matters is that there's a dragon on it. And that's pretty awesome to say. And that's why I had to make it number one on this list. So, Bhutan has a population of a little over 700,000 people. And its capital and largest uh, city is... Thimphu. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Thimphu. Conservation of its environment is one of the four pillars of Bhutan's gross national happiness philosophy, as mandated in its constitution. But Bhutan preserves at all times 60% of its land under forest cover. Bhutan has succeeded in doing so. More than 51% of the country is protected, the largest percentage of any Asian country. Most of the intact forests interwoven with free-flowing rivers, so it's placed a huge emphasis on the preservation of its of its country's forests, and that's what's beautiful about Bhutan. Bhutan has also been known for the Gross National Happiness Index, which actually was on the news a few years ago. I remember when they started including that in their country, the emphasis on that aspect of their country. So it acts, so it adds to this very unique nation, this small yet unique nation with its really cool thunder dragon flag that I absolutely love. And that's why I added it to number one. So that was my list of the top 10 best flags or great flags. If you guys, again, if you guys have a list or a number of flags that you you would love to talk about, please comment in the comment section down below. Let me know some flags that you absolutely love and tell me why you guys love those flags. I hope you also gained some interesting information from this video. I hope you were slightly entertained by it. I try to be as entertaining as possible. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys have a wonderful day.